you know, there's so much stuff happening in the world today. And, you know, we, we see all these people trying to say it's man-made and all this junk, but I'm not, I don't want to give man that much control. If we start giving man control over the weather, I think we're in trouble because our focus is not where it needs to be. We know that God controls the weather. You know, Jesus spoke to the wind and the waves and it obeyed him. God's the one that made the wind and the waves in the first place when he, there back in Genesis, when he spoke it into being. And I know what it is, you know, God revealed to me that if they can say it's climate change or whatever they, you know, they want to call it, weather making machine, which I heard that this week. I heard somebody trying to accuse you know, people to, to, of affecting the weather because of you know, people that reverse, vote a certain way in North Carolina and they're trying to affect it in other states that, are, you know, that may vote a certain way. And, and to me, that's a bunch of hogwash. I'm just going to put it to you the way it is. It's a bunch of hogwash to believe that garbage. Satan wants people to think that God doesn't control things and that you don't have to look to God. Satan wants you to look at yourself and look at other people. Because if, you, if we compare ourselves, if we look at ourselves and we compare ourselves with other people, then the standards are not as high. Because, I mean, if you're trying to be like me, then I got news for you. I'm flawed. I was expecting Amy to say amen real big right there. I'm, not, I'm nowhere near perfect. And I'm not the standard. You may compare yourself to me and you may think, you know, well, I'm, not, I'm doing better than he is. Or you may compare yourself to somebody else, but that's not the standard. Jesus Christ is the standard. And when we look to Jesus, none of us measure up. None of us will ever be good enough. I mean, none of us deserve it, what Jesus did for us. But thank God for his grace. Today, and I kind of wondered, well, Lord, should I do this message in wake of the way things are going? Because I know people have been posting, well, God's judgment's coming on Asheville because of the witchcraft and because of all this stuff. And I do believe that God's going to use things to wake, try to wake people up. The sad thing is a lot of people are not going to wake up. R wide is the road that leads to destruction, and many are those that find it. And only narrow is the road that leads to life. I don't know about you, I want the narrow road. And that's through Jesus Christ. So, you know, I, I kept saying, Lord, should I use this scripture? I mean, should I do this message? You know, and, and, and based on what's happening around us. But this is not a message to say, well, you deserve that or anything like that because that's, this is just a wake-up call as far as what's happening all around us today. Let's begin reading Matthew verse 24, or chapter 24 and following. It says, Jesus left the temple and was walking away when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to its buildings. Do you see all these things? He asked, I tell you the truth, no, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. As Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen? And what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age? Jesus answered, watch out that no one deceives you. For many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ. And will deceive many. You will hear of wars and rumors of wars, but see to it that you are not alarmed. Such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. 
Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. And many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. But he who stands firm to the end will be saved. And this is the gospel of the kingdom. And this gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations. And then the end will come. So when you see standing in the holy place the abomination that causes desolation, spoken of through the prophet Daniel, let the reader understand. And then let those who are in Judea flee to the mountains. Let no one in the roof of, on the roof of his house go down to take anything out of the house. Let no one in the field go back to get his cloak. How dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in winter or on the Sabbath. For, when, for then there will be great distress, unequaled from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been cut short, no one would survive. But for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. At that time, if anyone says to you, look, there is the Christ, or there he is, do not believe it, for false Christ and false prophets will appear and perform great signs and miracles to deceive even the elect, if that were possible. See, I have told you ahead of time. So if anyone tells you, there he is out in the desert, do not go out. Or here he is in the inner rooms, do not believe it. For as the lightning comes to the east and flashes to the west, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. Wherever there is a carcass, there the vultures gather. Immediately after the distress of those days, the sun will be darkened and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from the sky and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time, the sign of the Son of Man will appear in the sky and all the nations of the earth will mourn. They will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of the sky with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a loud trumpet call. And they will gather his elect from the four winds, from the one end of the heavens to the other. Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will certainly not pass away until all these things have happened. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. I'm going to read the rest of it in a minute, but I want to stop right there and we're going to pray. Lord Jesus, Lord, I don't have any words that can change anybody. But you are the word of God. You are the word of life. And Lord, I ask that you take control of my tongue and that you form the words today. Jesus, help me to be invisible, that you would be seen and you would get the glory. God, I pray that every heart and mind will be opened and focused on you to receive the revelation of your word that you want us to receive. And we give you the praise and we give you the glory and the honor in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. This passage has a twofold meaning. After Jesus said these things, and he talked about the temple, that not one stone would be left on another, that it would all be thrown down. In 70 AD, Israel fell, and, and the temple was destroyed. And that's, that's part of what he was talking about, but it also has another meaning. And he's talking about the things that you and I have to look forward to. You know, some people look on at, at what's coming in fear and dread. And some people think, well, I'm having too much fun here in this life. I don't, I don't want things to end. 
I remember I used to pray, well, Lord, just let me get married first and let me have kids and let me do all this stuff before you come. I mean, all that stuff happened, but had it not, it would have been okay too as long as I was right with Jesus. I'm going to tell you something. The things that you and I have in this life, they are nothing compared to what God has in store for those who love Him. They are nothing. I don't care how good your life is here. I mean, I'm thankful God's blessed me with three children. I've got uh, a grandchild with another one on the way. I'm, you know, God has done so much in my life. You know, what I saw, what I felt God spoke to me was going to do, he's, he's brought about. I mean, you know, I've been preaching for, almost, ordained for almost 21 years, and God's done so much stuff. And we've seen so many things, and I know you, people have said, you know, through the ages that there's Jesus, or here he is, and here he's coming, and we've had... Yeah, there was even somebody, I think he was in Miami, I think he was a Cuban man or something, he was Hispanic, that claimed to be Jesus in recent years, and a lot of people were following him. And we've seen a lot of false prophets come up, people claiming that some things are going to happen, and I'll tell you, if, some, if a prophet is a true prophet from God, then what they say is going to come about. If somebody tells you something and it doesn't happen, then... Wake up. That wasn't from God. It's another way that you tell whether somebody is speaking what God would have them speak is whether they're lining up with the Word of God or not. Because if what somebody tells you does not line up with God's Word, then you need to reject it and you need to stay away from it because that's not God. That's the enemy trying to deceive. And I know there's been natural disasters and there's been things that have took place you know, all throughout history. We know we had the flood. That was God's judgment. God promised he would never flood the whole earth again. Let me say that. We just had this massive flood and it was just, just mind-blowing and disastrous and caused a lot of, a lot of destruction. God said he would never flood the whole earth again. He even gave us a rainbow as a symbol of his promise. We know Satan tries, you know Satan's a counterfeiter. Satan can't create anything. Satan takes what God created and he perverts it. He tries to distort it and he tries to deceive with it. Now we see, we see people who have been deceived. We see homosexuals people that have been misled into going after people of their own sex in ways that God never intended for it to happen. We see them using what God put up there and gave us as a promise. We see them using that as a symbol to represent all the corruption and all the sin and the junk that they're involved in. And we've got a government and, and a society that says, well, you need to just pat them on the back. We need just to love everybody. We need just to accept everybody. I'm going to tell you something. We can actually love people in the hell. We're called to love. You can't win anybody over by beating them to death with the word of God. Without the love and grace of God, you've got to move in the spirit of Christ. We need to make sure that any time we speak, we do it through the Spirit of Christ. Otherwise, we can trample the harvest field and we can drive people away. But we have a responsibility. Look at your neighbor and say, you got a responsibility. We have a responsibility and that responsibility is to tell people the truth about Jesus and His Word. We can love people in the hell. But you know something? If we are led by the Spirit, 
those who are called by God's name, those who have truly given their life to the Lord and are focused on Him are led by the Spirit. If we, if we live our life even as a believer and we allow ourselves to be focused on ourself, we're going we're gonna to allow, the old self is going to raise its ugly head up and it's going to say things and do things that are not in line with the Spirit. So we need to be very, very careful what we speak and how we speak it. But that doesn't mean that we close our eyes and just say, go do what you want to do. Go live the way you want and we never tell them the truth. You know, the first way you show somebody the truth is in your life. The way you live shows whether you belong to Christ or not. You know, Jesus said that they would know that we're disciples, first of all, why? Because we love one another. And also, he said the signs that we belong to him is that our life bears fruit. What kind of fruit? Fruit of hate and bitterness? No. The fruit of love and patience. The fruit of the Holy Spirit. We have the characteristics of Christ in our life and that shows that we belong to Him. If we don't look like Jesus, then we need to do some soul searching. And I'm not talking about going out and putting a white robe on and growing a beard. Ladies, I don't want any of y'all to grow a beard. <laughs> We're talking about living with the heart of Christ. We're in the last days. We're in a time when everything that Jesus said would take place is taking place. I want to look at Matthew 24, verse 4. And, and follow, and it says, Watch out that no one deceives you. You know, I saw somebody posting something the other day. Somebody was claiming that Jesus was coming back, and they gave a date this year. I don't remember what the date was, but I'm thinking, really? Really? It says even the Son doesn't know when the time's coming. Not till the Father says it's time. And all these people think they can tell us, like the book Christ Returns and by 1988, I think, and then this, they kept moving the date back, writing all these books, and people were actually buying the books. This is the book I need on that. I'm not telling you not to read other books, because I read other books about God, and, and that you know, we've got to make sure they line up with the Word. But Jesus said these things were going to happen, but we don't know the time, we don't know the hour. Wouldn't it be awesome if we didn't even get out of this church service today? I'm just saying, we need to be ready. Verse 4, Jesus answered, Watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name, claiming I am the Christ, and will deceive many. If God's a... If God's truly a loving God, I couldn't see him send anybody to hell. That was said by one of the leading talk show hosts across America. She's held up as a type of God in the talk show industry. I said a type here. There's only one God. God doesn't send people to hell. We send ourselves to hell by rejecting His Son, Jesus Christ, by rejecting His ways. So many people will come claiming to be Christ or even saying things that deceive people. That's my paraphrase. Verse 6, it says, You will hear of wars, and rumors of wars, 
but see to it that you are not alarmed. Wars and rumors of wars. Have y'all been watching the news lately? Have you heard about what's going on with Israel? We know that it's been one year. Is today the seventh or is that tomorrow? That's tomorrow. The seventh. I think it's tomorrow. Will be one year since. Is it one year since the hostages were taken and since you know twelve hundred Israelis were killed by Hamas? Israel's been going in recently and they've been retaliating. They've been you know Iran and has been sending these missiles and everything into Israel. And, you know, Israel has been able to take out a lot of leadership, if not all the main leadership with Hamas. Iran is saying they're not going to stand back and they're going to come in. But from the word I get, Israel is preparing to be able to go in for a ground invasion. Is this the last war? Or the beginning of the last war? I don't know. I'm not going to tell you it is. I just know that you need to watch Israel and you need to be aware of what is going on in, in the Middle East. And we know that yeah, ever since Ishmael, God said that they would be fighting always. You know, if God had just, if Abraham had just continued to trust God in that area and not tried to help him out, maybe we wouldn't have his problem. But what, what Abraham did actually played into God's plan because he knew what he was going to have to do from the moment Adam and Eve sinned. So they had to, all this stuff was going to take place. God knew it all ahead of time. But I'm just saying that there's a lot of stuff going on. Wars and rumors and wars. And he said such things must happen, but the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. Okay, we're seeing that. We're seeing that all around us. The end's not here yet, but we're seeing it starting. And then he goes on to say, there will be famines and earthquakes in various places. How many, how many of you thought that we would ever have an earthquake in North Carolina? We've had them. They haven't been significant, but we have had them here in North Carolina. Earthquakes are for Oklahoma, for places like yeah, they have them. Yeah, India, places like that, we've heard of earthquakes. But in North Carolina, it's been taking place. Earthquakes so severe in recent history that it caused something that I'd never even heard about. A tsunami that came in and caused waves from the ocean to come and flood Nations, so earthquakes in various places, all these are beginning of birth pains. Then you will be handed over to be persecuted and put to death, and you will be hated by all nations because of me. At that time, many will turn away from the faith and will betray and hate each other. Many false prophets will appear and deceive many people. Because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold. The love of most will grow cold. What are we seeing all around us? I mean, I know whenever we have stuff happen, like last week with uh, Helene, we see people coming forward, we see them helping. But as a general rule, have you noticed the love of many growing cold? Even many people who had one time served faithfully in the church or served God in various ways, many people's hearts have become cold. Many of them have even turned, some of them have even turned away from Christ. It breaks my heart to see what's going on. 
He says that yeah, many people will betray and hate each other. We're seeing people, even people in families, that are hating one another. Families are, you, you always say, you know, nothing's thicker than blood, and you always expect families to always be together, but yet, yet we're seeing, even in, in many families, even in my own, I've seen you know, strife and division and seen stuff that I don't like. It all comes from the spirit of self. It's the spirit of self. Do you know that, look at your neighbor and say, self is, where, is your problem. Every time I fall, every time I fall, every time I, I have a problem you know, that gets me away from God, it's because of self. You, know, you see these things that say, the devil made me do it. I'm going to tell you something. The devil can't make you do anything that you don't yield to. But self wants to yield to Satan. This flesh does not want to serve God. But if we yield this flesh to Jesus Christ daily, and we allow his spirit to have full control of us, he will put to death the desires of the flesh. And cause us to desire more and more the things of God. And he will set us free. But self is the problem. Self was the problem with Adam and Eve. Self was the problem with Satan. Satan wasn't created as, as, as this hideous devil. And he looks nothing like the pictures that we see of the devil. He comes... Disguised as an angel of light, trying to make you think the things that God knows will harm you are going to actually be good for you. So many people's hearts are going to turn cold, they're going to you know, hate each other. Many false prophets are going to come and deceive many people. You know, there's a lot of false prophets even slipping in a lot of churches. And that's sad. That's why it's so important that we know the Word of God. It says, because of wickedness, verse 12, because of the increase of wickedness, the love of most will grow cold, but he who stands firm to the end will be saved. Who's going to be saved? Those who stand firm, those who stand on the word of God to the end. Those who are faithful. I'm going to tell you, you can't be faithful, but you can be faithful through him. This, it's only through Christ Jesus in you. He is the hope of glory. He is the only one who can help you through his Holy Spirit to stand firm. You know, last week I talked about how he has predestined us to be changed in the image of the Son of God and that that only takes place as we willfully submit ourselves into his hands daily. You can't change yourself. I can't change myself. I, you know, we're going to be coming up. It's hard to believe we're getting ready to come up on 2025 in a couple of months. Time to get out all these New Year's resolutions, all these times to, to try to you know, figure out all the things we want to change about our life. And I'm going to tell you something. The only thing that's going to bring lasting change is to continually submit our life to Christ and allow Him to change our wants and desires away from ourself and away from this flesh into the kingdom of God, the things of the kingdom of God. This gospel, verse 14, of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations, and then the end will come. You know, we've, had, we've had missionaries all throughout history, even doubting Thomas, that we like to call him Doubting Thomas because he had to see the hands and feet of Jesus. He died as a martyr taking the gospel to India. See, it doesn't matter 
what your story was and the times you failed Christ. What matters is that you finish the race. And because of people like Thomas who went to India and these other nations and because of technology, technology can distract you and it can take your time if you're not careful, but technology can also be a powerful thing. I'm thankful that, that we have opportunities to take the gospel, even though we're right here on 5, 520 Lois Lane in Albemarle, North Carolina. The gospel is going all around the world thanks to the internet and thanks to social media. I've got dear friends in India. I've met friends in Nigeria and, and other Pakistan and other nations that are getting the word of God even right here from this pulpit and from other pulpits and around this great nation and around the world. So the gospel must first be preached to all nations. Nations that had not been opened previously in recent years have begun to be open to the gospel of Jesus Christ. So it says the gospel of the kingdom will be preached in the whole world as a testimony to all nations and then the end will come. I don't know about you, but to me it looks like we're getting close. When you think about where all the gospel is going today and you think about all the things that are taking place then I'm, I'm here to tell you today, I honestly don't believe that it's going to be too much longer. Will it be in my lifetime? I don't know. But no matter what, I'm ready whenever. I'm ready. I'm just here to tell you that Satan wants to get us occupied. Satan wants to get you focused on what's going on around you. Satan wants you to get caught up and wrapped up in yourself and your life. But if we put our eyes on Jesus Christ and live for Him, He will direct our steps. I'm going to tell you something. God has took me places that I never dreamed possible. Yes, I, I have not pastored a church with a million people in it. Oh, me, we started out, and I wrote this list of all these things. I said, okay, we're going to have 100 people the first year. We're going to have 500 people, 500 people by the fifth year. By year 10, we're going to have 1,000 people. I'm going to tell people to surrender to Jesus, to lose themselves in his presence, and he'll change them, and they'll be free, and everybody's going to say hallelujah, and they're going to flock in here. But you know what? We can't force our agenda on God. For one thing, do you know that at that stage in, in our life and in ministry, had those things happened, do you know I'd have been walking around like some kind of peacock? I would have thought it was all me. And it's not, it's not about me. If one person's life has been changed in the last 21 years, it's been well worth it. Well worth it. One person. And i got to believe there's been many, many people along the way. Some of them, yeah, I, I've heard testimony that they made it because we were here. And so i got to believe that, that we were obedient, have been obedient to God. Have I been obedient in everything? No, I've made mistakes. Probably going to make some more. And I just pray that you'll forgive me if I do and love me and, <laughs> and pray for me. But I'm just here to tell you that time is short. Will I ever see Pure Heart have a thousand people in it? I don't know. Doesn't matter as long as what God wants accomplished is accomplished. And if God even leaves people out of here to go and start other churches in different areas that need a church, even if, if people aren't here, that's what matters. 
that lives are changed. We have had some that have gone in the ministry out of here. Things are going to happen and have been happening. I can't, it blows me away. I hit my mic. It blows me away to see where we have come in politics. And where we have come as a nation, the things that people are standing and running on for office today that 20, 30 years ago, there's no way that person would have ever got it, been considered or elected if they ran on, on those things. But now we're seeing it. And why is that? Because this nation has moved and the world has moved more and more away from God. But you know, and I don't want to just say everybody's going to hell in a bobsled and that's, you know, everything's evil because in the midst of all the evil, the Lord still has his remnant and God is still touching hearts. He's still saving people. He's still changing them. And that is the reason that Jesus has not returned yet because as long as there's one person that he knows will accept him, then the Father's going to delay that time because it's not God's will that even one person should perish, but that all should be saved. There's going to come a time when the great harvest is going to come, when God's going to weed out the evil from the good. There will be a judgment one day. But there's also going to be a time of rejoicing for all of us that know him. Because we're going to be with him. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. It may be morning, night, or noon, but Jesus is coming soon. The question is, are you going to be ready? Are you going to be ready? He goes on to say, Verse 19, how dreadful it will be in those days for pregnant women and nursing mothers. Pray that your flight will not take place in the winter or on the Sabbath, for then there will be great distress, unequaled with the, from the beginning of the world until now, and never to be equaled again. If those days had not been short, cut short, no one would survive, but for the sake of the elect, those days will be shortened. Time of trouble's coming. Unequal like never before. But I'm here to tell you today that I've seen God do some tremendous things in my life. Amy and I have lived through tornadoes that went over our head when we were sitting in the car. We, we lived through storms throwing a tent up on a power line that we were in selling fireworks. We've lived through lived through floods where the car drowned out and God delivered us by starting a car with the engine underwater when I was a kid and we drove out because we were praying. We've lived through tornadoes going over our mobile home and watching the leaves circle and it, it didn't touch down at us. It went on to Montgomery County after it went down rolling hills and tore up a bunch of mobile homes. We lived through a lot of things. And I'm here, and some of you have too. And I'm here to tell you that, that God is going to take care of his people. He's going to be with us. Jesus is coming. And you know, my denomination of Assemblies of God believes that Jesus is going to take us out ahead of time before the trouble hits. But I'm here to tell you that no matter when Jesus comes back, whether it's the beginning, middle, or the end, we need to be ready and we need to be looking for Jesus Christ. That's the most important thing, that our hearts are ready to go with Jesus Christ at any time. I'm going to tell you, God could call you home right now. I don't care how old you are. God could call you home right now. This, you may not even have another day. 
I may not have another day. Nobody knows the time or the hour. We may be here when the trumpet sounds. But I'm here to tell you that Jesus said that we are to look and see the times that are going on around us. And we need to be ready. Verse 32, it says, Now learn this lesson from the fig tree. As soon as its its twigs get tender and its leaves come out, you know that summer is near. Even so, when you see all these things, you know that it is near, right at the door. All what things? Wars and rumors of wars. Earthquakes. Famines. Tsunamis. Disasters. Is this a message of fear? That's not what it's about. This is supposed to be a message that Jesus is and that that we don't have to worry about what's coming. I heard a story, and I think it, from what I read, I believe the people were praying on a rooftop in Asheville. And it was a mother, her seven-year-old son, and her parents. And the, root, the house split in two. And they were separated. The mother said that she was holding on, trying to hold on some debris and stuff, and she was you know, getting beat up, and she was tired, but she said she heard a voice that told her to let go. I think she may have heard, heard it twice or something, but she let go. And a little bit, little, and somehow she managed to get wedged between. I didn't understand what it was she got wedged between or ended up with, but it was a short time later somebody saw her and rescued her. God heard her cry. Her son and her parents didn't make it. Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming soon. Jesus said in verse 35, Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. I believe before long there's going to be lightning and and there's going to be fireworks in the sky and it's going to be Jesus coming. No one knows the day or the hour. I'm going to read the last part of this chapter and then we're going to close says no one, verse 36, no one knows that day or hour, not even the angels in heaven, nor the Son, but only the Father. See, no man can know, no man can write a book. God doesn't say he's going to give a prophecy, he's going to give a word to certain people and say, this is exactly when I'm coming. So no one knows the time or the hour except the Father. It says, as it was in the days of Noah, so it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Days of Noah, there was so much corruption, so much evil in the days of Noah. Just like we have today. It says, for in the days before the flood, people were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage up to that, the day Noah entered the ark. And they knew nothing about what would happen until the flood came and took them all away. That is how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. They knew nothing about what was going on until the flood took them away. People in North Carolina and Tennessee and other areas affected by the flood and everything, some of them said that they got up Friday morning or whatever it was after the first part of the storm hit, and they thought, well, we missed the worst of it. And lo and behold, they didn't know what was coming. No one knows the time of the hour. Up to the day that Noah entered the ark, said they knew they did not know what was going to happen. And the flood came and took them away. That is how, how it will be at the coming of the Son of Man. Two men will be in the field, one will be taken and the other left. 
Two women will be grinding with a hand mill. One will be taken and the other left. Therefore keep watch because you do not know on what day your Lord will come. But understand this, that the owner of the house had known at what time of night the thief was coming. He would have kept watch and would not have let his house be broken into. So you also must be ready because the Son of Man will come in an hour when you do not expect him. Who then is the faithful and wise servant whom the master has put in charge of the servants in his household to give them their food at the proper time? It will be good for that servant whose master finds him doing when he returns. I tell you the truth, he will put him in charge of all his possessions. But suppose that servant is wicked and says to himself, My master is staying away a long time. And he then begins to beat his fellow servants and to eat and drink with drunkards. The master of that servant will come on a day when he does not expect him and an hour he is not aware of. He will cut him to pieces and assign him a place with the hypocrites. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Today, today I'm going to ask you this question. Whether you're here in this church or you're listening, you know, wherever you're at in the world, I'm going to ask you this question. Are you ready? Are you ready? Jesus is coming. Jesus is coming. We know he's coming. He's, why? Because he said he's coming. And his word is true. Everything we've seen in the word of God, we have seen being fulfilled. Israel became a nation again. That was one thing that had to happen. It happened. Uh, are you ready? Are you ready? We see all the things, all the events taking place. We see the wars. We see the rumors of wars. We see all the things you know, the earth being shook by all these natural disasters and all these things. We've seen financial collapses. We've seen all kinds of things taking place. We see people, you know, we like to say, you know, we've seen people lose their faith because we see people that have once walked close with the Lord who have walked away. Their hearts have grown cold. We see the gospel being preached all around the world. Are you ready? Will you be ready? Or will you be like the servant who, who thinks that Jesus is going to delay a long time and decides he's going to go live the way he wants to live and maybe get ready at the last minute? Those people that died in the flood, they didn't, many of them didn't have a last minute. My heart goes out to all the people who have lost homes and everything else. God loves each one of the people that have been affected by all these things. But do you know that God cares most about our soul? Are you ready are you ready Jesus is coming are you ready while we're all in a, in a state of prayer reverence to the Lord I don't care how long you've walked with Jesus I want us all to ask God to search our heart so that if there's anything in us that is offensive, anything in us that's not pleasing to God, then we need to get that right. We're going to receive communion in just a moment. If you've got any unforgiveness toward anyone in your heart, or if you, 
need to ask God to forgive you for anything. Let's make things right today. Are you ready? Praise you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. If God's speaking to you while we, while we worship the Lord, if God's speaking to you, and you know there's anything in your heart that's not right with God,